The history of the world has been told in objects, but what about the history of women? Looking at five key items and the ideas they symbolize, this series of films explores the journey of women from second-class citizens with no legal rights, no vote and no official status to the powerful people they are today. Sitting on the banks of the Avon in Stratford is an iconic modernist building of the interwar era. The theatre, used by the Royal Shakespeare Company for all its big prestigious productions, was completed in 1932 and designed by a woman architect, Elizabeth Scott. And it's such a statement building, the modernism of it, which at the time had, had very mixed responses. So Edward Elgar, for instance, described it as unspeakably ugly. Nowadays, people absolutely love it. It's very clean lines. When you, when you go inside, these, these wonderful staircases, it's got confidence and uh, a solidity, which I think is absolutely brilliant. When in 1927, Elizabeth Scott becomes the winner, of a competition to design this new theatre. She's beaten more than 70 other people, and yet it's only 10 years since she started her architectural training. It's a time when women architects were unbelievably rare. They're not that common nowadays, but they were unbelievably rare. This really iconic building symbolizes women's new role in society. Just four years after they've gained equal franchise with men, the point in time they're beginning to have the first few MPs, the first barristers, the first lawyers. Not surprisingly, women's magazines, women's groups celebrated it massively at the time. There's all sorts of pictures of it appearing everywhere and everyone sees this as a real indication that women are shifting in their role in society. So for Elizabeth Scott, getting this commission to design this theatre was obviously very important in her career. She sets up her first partnership on her own. She moves on to become a leading post-war uh, female architect. It has to be said that this is still quite unusual. The majority of women who work in it don't have children. It's something which is uh, not a common area for women to work in. For me, seeing that building, realising that 90 years ago, a woman was chosen as the person who should design it, who should put her stamp on what's one of the most iconic tourist areas of Britain and was then just as now, is a real point of celebration. It's an indication that although we have a sense that women are hidden from history, there were some very determined women who actually made their mark in quite unmistakable ways. A History of Women in 100 Objects is now available to buy on Amazon and at all good bookshops.